Hi everyone and welcome to our exclusive Miami Film Festival Q&A for the film Bridges, which is a competitor for the Knight Maiden MIA Award and the Jordan Wrestler First Feature Award. My name is Lauren Cohen and I'm the co-director of programming here at the festival and I'm joined today by the director of Bridges, Maria Karina Ramirez. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, thank you for having me. Of course. So to kick things off, I just wanted to say how impressive it is that you wrote, directed, produced and starred in this film. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you got this project off the ground and what it was like wearing so many different hats in the filmmaking process? Yeah, so it was actually a project that took a very long time because I started writing it when I first left school, which was I went to New World School of the Arts and I um, studied acting there. And I've been mostly an actress my whole life. Um, but I started seeing that there was a void in the type of stories that I wanted to tell and in the type of representation I felt was lacking for women and for women of color and for immigrants. And so I, I was writing the story for a while, kind of on the side while I took my acting gigs. And then eventually we, I did a I had the lovely opportunity to do a series called Grown, which we shot here in Miami and my friends wrote, uh, my friends and I co-wrote. And once I did that, I felt like, okay, there's, there is a place for me to be able to tell my own stories. And I, once I saw that it was possible, I went back to the story that I had been writing for a while and decided that I wanted to do it. And everyone around me was like, you should direct it. It's your story. It's very close to home. You should direct it. And I was like, no, no, no. I wrote it and I'm going to act in it. Like, that's okay. But throughout the years, um, I kind of felt that calling more and more. And eventually it turned out that I, once I made the decision, okay, I'm going to direct it. Then things started happening. I won uh, an Oolite award for um, to get it off the ground. And then I was able to get some of the money from investors once I made the decision that I was also gonna direct it. So I feel like the film was kind of waiting for that to happen, for it to right. pop off. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, a long journey, but I'm so grateful that it was that way because now I feel like I was finally prepared to to do it all because there there were a lot of hats, right? So totally. It, in, in a, you know, to be able to manage that, I, I felt like I had a place like super comfortable with my acting. I've been acting long enough. So that was kind of like the easiest part, right? And mm -hmm. I had to be comfortable with what was written and that had taken a few years. So then I could focus on the directing and on the producing. Totally. And so we just were talking about how you starred in the film. Was that your plan all along? Did you ever, I know it is autobiographical. Did you ever consider somebody else for the role or did you always know that was a role you wanted to play yourself? I always knew it was a role I wanted to play myself. And, I, and I'll clarify, it's actually, it's about my sister's experience, um, okay. not quite about mine, but but my family. So mm -hmm. in that sense, it is autobiographical. Um, but I knew I wanted to portray it because, again, I have been an actress my whole life. So that was like, for me, that was one of the motors behind it. Like, okay, I'm going to do yeah. this thing where I can where I can show the types of roles that I want to play. And so that then one thing led to another but the original idea was always I'm going to do this thing so I can play it myself I don't know who's going to direct it I don't know who's going to produce it but I'm going to play it you know and then it turned out that I ended up producing it and directing it yeah and you know you were just mentioning that this is a very personal story to your family can you tell me a little bit about how you know and you, you the movie has a very intimate feel to it can you tell me a little bit about you know when it's something so close to your own heart and your own experience how that really affected the filmmaking and writing process. You know, again, I think um, the fact that it took so many years for me to finally come to the place of, of telling it, uh, I like to say that it was a story that I felt and lived in my own skin, but I was already far enough removed from the experience uh, yeah. personally, right? So from, from the hardship of what that was, of what that experience was, so many years have passed. And so now I could tell it with different eyes. It's kind of like when you look back in your life and you reminisce about something that maybe was really painful at the time, but you've already healed. You've already done your process of letting it go and, and you're able to tell it without sort of suffering it still. Um, and so I think one, that was really helpful at the time, right? So to be removed um, so that I can really get in there and not really, it's gonna sound funny, but not really make it about myself, even though it's my face on the screen and I'm the one interpreting, it kind of became this thing about, this is a story that represents maybe a lot of people's experiences and an, an experience that I had on my own and that I haven't quite seen like this before. Um, but it's not about me. So that kind of gave me the freedom to be able to look at it creatively and take some liberties and change some things that weren't quite like that in real life. Um, but still do it from a place of love because it was going back to a time in my life where I went through something 
um, that was that was hard to share. And the reason why it's so intimate, I think it, it's also because for me, I was hesitant for many years to tell the story because a lot of the times when I see the immigrant experience on screen, when I've seen it, it's very, not always, but in my experience, it's usually very melodramatic or very, very dramatic and very um, like bold about what it's saying. Right. And I kind of, I was more interested in showing the day to day and, and I'm more interested in silences and what's not said and, and leaving the question and not really answering it, you know? Um, and so I think, again, being able to have had the time from the experience to the making of the film to really process that gave me the opportunity to, for it to be intimate and not, you know, I feel like if I was still in it, maybe I would have wanted to like yell it out more and make right. it more obvious. You would have a different this. experience if you were making it at the time. And I also mm -hmm. think the, the voiceovers help a lot with that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you're in her head, but you're not, you know, it, it doesn't need to really explain much more than that. You kind of know what she's mm -hmm. going through just by those voiceovers alone. And I also want to mm -hmm. ask you about the um, the title Bridges. You know, Bridges mm -hmm. is mentioned, um, the symbol and the idea of is mentioned multiple times throughout the movie. And it's of course the title of the film. Can you tell us a little bit about why you um, made that decision and why that was an important symbol for you to convey? Yeah, um, for me, you know, the way I work creatively is a lot, like I feel like ideas come to me and I'm, and, and again, I am the vessel and it's kind of a download and that's the, and maybe in the moment I don't quite get it and I'm just like hearing it and I'm like, okay, this, there's something here, right? So when the idea originally came up, my grandfather was actually an engineer in real life in Venezuela and he built bridges. And when I started writing the story, I had the idea of this girl, um, well, my sister is an engineer, but she's a biomedical engineer, but I had the idea of this girl that wanted to be like her grandfather and wanted to build bridges like him. And so that was one of the first things I knew about the movie was the title. It was like bridges, it's gonna be called that. And then it turned out as the story kept developing more that it, the name itself had a lot of meaning to it, right? And to me, it yeah. became more about bridging the gap between what people think is an experience and what the actual experience might be, you know, and again, I can't speak for everyone and for every dreamer and for every immigrant, but I can speak for mine. And, and I know what maybe some people think it's like, um, or what comes to mind when you say immigrant or when you say undocumented or when you say dreamer. And to me, it was about bridging that, right? Like yeah. the gap between my experience and what is thought of the experience. So I think that was one of the cool things about just hearing that little whisper right in the beginning, like this is the name of it. And it's inspired by your grandpa who built bridges, but then it's going to mean something else. You know, it's going to, it's going to take on more strength as, as it, as it developed. Yeah, no, it's really the perfect title for the film. And the last thing I'm going to ask you about is the casting process, because mm -hmm. I think everyone around you in the film really just does such an incredible job, specifically um, your little sister, who I think the the subplot of her with the lottery is one of my mm -hmm. favorite and most touching parts of, of the movie. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about how you kind of built that cast of characters around you and the process of that? Natalia, I found her. I went, so when I was trying to raise the funds to make the film, I we shot a, uh, a sizzle reel for it. And for the sizzle, we needed this actress to play the, the young girl, um, which was also one of my favorite parts because that role is actually what I what was me in real life, mm -hmm. right? I didn't have the lottery thing, but I did have the acting thing, which was like my dream. Like if I get this, you know, then all of our problems would be solved. So it was right. kind of like, you know, the, the lottery thing. And that's kind of who I was to my sister too, like that annoyingly hopeful girl that was teasing her all the time. Um, so anyway, I went to the school where I knew there were a lot of this acting school, a lot of Venezuelan kids uh, in Doral. I, I went on a search. Uh, I did a workshop, a class, like I was teaching a class for the kids and they didn't know that I was really low key, like auditioning them for this, for this teaser. And Natalia, you know, the premise of the, of the acting exercise that we were doing was okay you're going to be sitting in front of the tv and you're going to be hoping for the lottery i explained to them you know in the scenario where your family's going through all these things and you're really like clinging on to it for you know with all hope that this would come through and i'm going to tell you if you win or not as you're watching and just listen to my voice and react to that right and a lot of the kids you know kids are very um big when they act a lot of the times right because mm -hmm. they're used to like D disney shows and nickelodeon and all those things 
And in comes this girl, um, she was nine at the time, eight or nine at the time. Uh, when we shot, she ended up being 11 already, but she was eight or nine at the time. And she sat down and, you know, she was just watching the TV, the imaginary TV with this poker face. And when I told her that she lost, you know, and mind you, she had just watched 20 other kids like stomp the ground and throw the chair and everything. And she just sat down and I said, and you know, and I called out the numbers and I'm like, and unfortunately you lost. And she did this like such small, but heartbreaking reaction where she just kind of took a deep breath and started crying without doing anything, without moving. She just took a deep breath and started crying and grabbed an imaginary remote and turned it off and walked away. And I was like, I had chills because it was so powerful and so meaningful and so small. Um, and so I found her and I was coaching her throughout like two years for her other auditions that she would have. We developed a really beautiful relationship while I was like, I need you to like be on hold for me yeah. until I can make the movie happen. And then that happened. And then everyone else, you know, I found through relationships that I built acting, right? So Maria Alejandra, who plays the mother, I'd done a play with her a while ago and she's like a big star in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I hope she agrees, you know, cause this is my first and it's a, a smaller budget that I'm sure she's used to, but she was so gracious and loving to accept because she believed in the story. And then Julissa, who I don't know if you've watched her on Hentified, um, mm -hmm. the one that plays Yaquanda, my friend, she has this wonderful career that's blossoming so great right now. Um, and, and I, and we have the same manager. So my manager and I were like, let's, let's bring it to her and see if she'll be down. And she's from Miami and she's like, of course I want to come home and I want to tell the story. And so I feel like everyone, again, like all the little pieces of the puzzle were just coming along at the right time when they had to be, you know? Yeah, no, everything comes together so beautifully. And I know this is a movie that's going to connect with my Miami audiences in a really very real uh, and touching way. Um, so thank you so much again for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. And thank you to Miami Film Festival for being so inclusive of Latino stories. I always say this and I always tell Jay this. I feel like Miami Film Festival really is inclusive without trying to be. You know, it doesn't say mm -hmm. it. It doesn't, it's, it's not like waving a banner and saying there's this here, there's that. It just is, you know, when you show up, it's very Miami. It's, you can't think of Miami and not think of Caribbeans and Latinos. And the festival represents that without trying. And I am so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful to have my premiere there because this is my love letter to Miami. And there's no better place than Miami Film Festival, you know? Thank you so much. That means a lot.